let's take a look at a practical example about how we might go about building a low pass filter. And re recall that if we have a simple RC circuit and we measure across the capacitor, we will end up with a low pass filter. And for our low pass filter, what that means is that for certain frequencies above the corner frequency, those frequencies are going to be allowed. So everything that's kind of above this corner frequency, we're going to let in, and everything kind of after the corner frequency, we're going to reject. And so for signals that are like this, the corner frequency is dictated by one over RC. And so we have a free choice of what R and C might be, and we're really only limited by the components we have at hand. And so let's say that we wanted to build a low pass filter where its cutoff was 100 hertz. And again, we're going to have a trade off here of when we've been deriving all of our equations, this has always been in radians per second. But what we often talk about in terms of signals, and especially on our signal generation equipment, is in terms of hertz. And so we're going to need to recall that uh, 2 pi radians is 360 degrees, and so we can transfer between the two of them by saying, you know, something in radians per second is 2 pi f. And so if you wanted to replace our definition of omega over here, we can say 2 pi f is 1 over rc. And so if you wanted to complete this circuit, let's just assume a value for our resistor and say that it's 1k. So that means that the capacitor value is just going to be 1 over 2 pi f times r. So if I just flip 2 pi f and c, and plugging this all into your calculator will give you a capacitor value of 1.6 microfarads. So if we were going to build this circuit and we selected a 1K resistor, we would need a 1.6 microfarad capacitor. Now, what may happen is that you go over to the bin in the lab and you go, oh, I don't have a 1.6 microfarad capacitor. So usually we have more free choices of resistors than capacitors. And so if you were doing this circuit in a practical sense, I would start with sort of a, a known capacitor value, like something that's in the area. So maybe just say, uh, we're going to start with a three microfarad capacitor and then derive the resistor value because we can add and subtract and stitch resistors together much easier than we can capacitors because those come in fewer known quantities.